How long did it take to enter into NASA and what are the struggles you faced before entering into NASA? Yeah, I wanted to be an astronaut for many years since I was six years old. So the first time I applied to be an astronaut, they turned me down. Uh, I tried again two years later, they had another astronaut selection. I got turned down again. And then I started trying to improve my background. I took flying lessons, I learned to skydive, I taught a university course. Those seemed to be things that NASA was looking for. The third time I applied to be an astronaut, I made the group of 100 semi-finalists. And out of the thousands of people that apply, NASA will select 100 individuals and they, they, you undergo an exhaustive medical exam and then a, a one-hour interview. I went through that process, but the third time I still got turned down and I almost gave up. But at this point, I moved to Houston, Texas. I got a job with NASA as an engineer on the space shuttle program. And three years later, there was another astronaut selection. I sent my application in. The fourth time I made it in. So the number one lesson I've learned in my life is to never give up. I just wanted to know your experience in space. How does it feel when you enter into the space? The emotional experience, can you share? Yeah, it only takes eight and a half minutes to get to space. It's a quick trip up there on the space shuttle. And once I got to space, I unstrapped from my seat, I floated to the window, and I went, oh, you gasp. You just can't believe how beautiful our Earth is. I had an adrenaline rush. I was so excited to have made it to space. I dreamed of this day since I was six years old, and I was 39 when I first made it to space. Immediately as I looked out at the Earth, I wished that everybody could see it for 10 seconds. If, if you looked out the window and saw what I saw, it would forever change your view of our planet, and you would agree we need to take better care of our planet Earth here. How long you were in space and uh, uh, what is the food you took when you were in space? I went to space four times and each mission was about two weeks. So my total time in space is 44 days. And during that time, I went around the Earth 692 times. So 16 times every 24 hours, we orbit the Earth. Our food in space is okay. It's not delicious. You know, it's freeze-dried food. So we take cooked food, we freeze it, we remove all the moisture and they package it in plastic containers and it'll stay preserved without refrigeration for many years. Uh, I ate, we had um, sweet and sour chicken, a Chinese dish. Uh, I, I like beef and barbecue sauce. We had green beans, um, a, wide, a wide selection, hamburger patties that we, we would fly up there. So it was all okay, none of it was delicious. So what uh, qualification does an astronaut need to achieve to become an astronaut? You know, the NASA requirements, there's two types of astronauts, are pilot astronauts that come out of our military. They typically have three, 4,000 hours of jet flying experience. And then we have mission specialists, science astronauts, like my, myself and Kalpana Chala was a, a mission specialist. And there you need a minimum is a four-year college degree in math, science, engineering, or the medical field. But because the competition is pretty tough, it helps to have advanced degrees. Can you share a few experiences with uh, Kalpana Chavla? Any moments, if you remember? Yeah, I shared an office with her for six months. So she came in the astronaut class after mine, and we shared an office for six months. We worked within the same group at the Johnson Space Center, and I got to know her pretty well. She always, always had a big smile, a big, beautiful smile on her face. I never saw her without smiling, and she loved talking about flying. She always would love to talk about flying, you know, planes, and she was always talking like this. This is the way pilots talk, you know, talking about flying a jet. So I have this doubt. What do you do exactly when you enter into space? What are the researchers and study you do when you enter into the space? The research that we would do? You know, three of my four missions were science missions, like Kalpana Chala's last flight uh, on Columbia was a science mission. So we will... Typically during a two-week mission like that, we'll work on many experiments looking at how fires burn, how liquids behave. We take up small plants and animals to see how they grow and adapt in zero gravity. And the scientists do a lot of studies on the astronauts. Our muscles get weak in space. Our bones get weaker. So we're trying to learn all we can up in space, both about the human body, how other animals and plants grow in space, and how other areas in physics and the different sciences, how things are different when you take away gravity. Uh, 
There are actually reports that uh, people who go to space pollute the place and all that. Is it true? If it's true, uh, what kind of steps you've been taken for that? That people go to space pollute the air. Our rockets. I would be lying if I said the rockets did not pollute the air at all. Our big solid rocket boosters that we use to launch the shuttle, you know, polluted the air a little bit. So it's something that, you know, we have to fix that in our future rockets. You know, we'll try to make improvements so it's clean. Hydrogen and oxygen is a great rocket fuel that we could use and very clean to use. Will you take me to space? Yeah, I'm too old to go to space, so you're the next generation. You could go up there. There's a number of commercial uh, opportunities available. Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin from Amazon, you know, he's going to be launching space tourists. So in the next decade or two, I think it'll be fairly common for people to go to space, to see the Earth, maybe uh, go visit a, a, a tourist space station up there. Maybe some tourists get to go to the moon, live in a hotel on the moon for a while and come back to Earth. So I think the future is bright for space tourism. So how do you describe ISRO? ISRO, a great organization. It's been around for a number of years and they've come a long way. Uh, the fact that you launched the, the Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft to the moon, that it's in orbit right now and that in 10 days from now it'll be landing on the moon. And not only do you have an orbiter, a lander, you also have a rover that will be driving around on the moon. All three of those are pretty incredible accomplishments. And I think that's a great tribute to your engineers and your scientists here in India. If you want to subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to press the bell button, click on the link. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and follow us on the same way.